Hey y'all, it's Sam, and don't mind me, I have a bit of a cold at the moment, but hey, we're back with a, a little time-lapse video, and I want to discuss a particular favorite topic of mine, though it's more advice that I give rather than advice that I follow, and in this upcoming year, I want to change that. That being YOLO. I know it's a bit of a boomer word at this point, but hear me out. <laughs> I think it's a well-known staple for followers of mine that I often reach points in my artworks where the struggle is too real, and instead of giving up and quitting, I give up and quit on making anything look good. This is something I've been dealing with for years now, and I think it's a quite common theme for artists, uh, for us to feel that pressure to make something spectacular and worth sharing, and we have uh, quite an overpowering fear of making a piece we'd consider a failure or just plain crap. I think as someone who effectively puts themselves out there as an educator, I have an added pressure of not only wanting my art to look good because of that usual pressure, but also to reaffirm my position of, yes, I totally know what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. Why else would I be able to teach people how to do art? But a big part of me also wants to be real and show that even people who seem like they know what they're doing most often have similar stumbles and messes and can just as easily be confused on what they should be or what they should be doing and what's like you think it's a simple thing but it's just somehow not, and you make plenty of mistakes. Which is why I like to share my less than ideal pieces too, to stay humbled, but also show the realities of being an artist. So young or less experienced artists don't get caught up in the idea of more experienced artists always being perfect. As you can see from the time lapse in the background, this is actually from a live stream from 2019 in January, where I had a very strong YOLO moment where the watercolor piece I was working on was not working out at all, and it was a hot mess, and I think that was probably the first time that, at least I can recall, that I destroyed one of my own artworks. <laughs> I threw out the first attempt and did another one, and I was like, listen, we're just gonna let be, we'll let be, and whatever happens, happens, and we're just gonna YOLO, and that was just a big YOLO moment for me, so that's what you're seeing in the background. <laughs> I've discussed similar concepts in my Being Afraid to Draw video several years back. I'll link that in the description if you want to watch it again, or if you just want to watch it and you haven't seen it. And I've certainly gotten better at not being so caught up in trying to perform, but simultaneously I've somehow also gotten like worse or stagnant at the same time, <laughs> which is part of why I'm making this video to discuss this topic with y'all, get y'all's insight on your experiences with imposter syndrome, or the pressure of producing quality art, but also to hold myself accountable. One of the biggest pieces of advice I always give artists, new and old, is that art should be fun. And I still stand by that, but I don't always follow it. I used to be crushed with the weight of hating my own art. I made a video talking about that too, and it took years to really work through that. And now it looks like I need another push, this time for me to care less about the end product, and more so about the journey it takes to get there. And so I just want to make this little video to talk about this topic, but also to be like, hey, for my New Year's resolution, I want my art to just be crap. <laughs> I really want to not care about what I make, only how I make it. I want to experiment more, try things I've been holding off due to fears of the results, and play around, and make dumb stuff, trashy stuff, and who knows, maybe some good stuff will come out of it too. But that's not the goal. The goal, obviously, is to create freely without care. So I'm curious to hear y'all's thoughts. Have you dealt much with these sort of negative attitudes towards your art making process? Any tips for those working through it? Or are you still in the midst of it? And just to go back to the time lapse artwork in the background, I did end up liking the end result of the second one. And I feel like that happens so often when I reach a point in my art where I am fighting with it and I don't want to fight anymore. And I'm like, okay, yellow mode. It's going to turn into whatever it's going to turn into. It's just going to be what it's going to be. And I don't want to care anymore. I don't want to stress anymore. And then I end up almost always liking the end result once I do that. So definitely the reason or a big factor in why I want to just have that the entire year. So yeah, let me know your stories in the comments down below. Let me know your New Year's resolutions in the comments down below. Hopefully I will feel better in the new year and I won't be sick. And hopefully none of y'all are sick. And if you are sick, I'll be better soon. And yeah, so thanks for sticking with me for another year. And I'll see you in the next video, which should be my uh, 2022 in review video. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, goodbye. <laughs>